Welcome to everyone, I'm Siz, and The Forest is one of those games that sparked that joy in gaming that I've been looking for for quite some time now, specifically survival games. It's one of my favorite genres in gaming, and this one is probably one of the best ones out there. It's immersive as heck, dark at times, and can be challenging, especially if you have no idea what you're supposed to be doing. It's one of those games that because of its base building and creepy but mysterious design, it will inevitably suck you right in, not just with the story, but also because of its interesting take on survival horror. But nobody really cares about that. What you are looking for is a beginner's guide video on the forest. It can be a challenging game, but no worries as the game mostly boils down to how efficient you are and how you use your time and how you get the best out of whatever situation you are in, as that is what most survival games are. And so to help you guys and for those who are planning to try this game for yourselves, I made this video. The rules, the guidelines, or simply the do's and don'ts. This is... Again, for those who don't know, The Forest is a survival horror game developed and published by N Night Games. It's set in an open world where you crash land on a mysterious island, if it's even an island, surrounded by a tribe of cannibals. You build, gather materials, and explore during the day and defend yourself during the night. Sometimes during the day as well. All this while trying to find your son. And other than that, I will not be explaining anything else about the game in regards to story and setup. The game relies on mystery so much that spoiling as much as how the map looks like will ruin your experience. Instead, I'll be guiding you through the 7 most important factors in regards to playing the game. That's the first few days, resource gathering, crafting, base building, character needs, exploration, and combat. You understand that you'll survive the game at least until day 50, provided you don't do anything stupid. Which I do. A lot. Not only can it be confusing to begin with, the game will also be more and more challenging the longer it goes. Does that mean you should finish the game as fast as possible? No, I wouldn't recommend doing that. It just means that you could, or rather would, need to restart a few times or so just to get a good start. But hopefully, with this beginner's guide, you wouldn't need to. So here goes. First is... In the first few days, the only thing you have to worry about is where you set up your base, whether it be a temporary one or a permanent one. If you want to build right next to where you spawned, you could, but I suggest moving a little bit further as enemies usually go to that location to check for survivors. But before you do, I suggest looting everything you have in sight such as food rations, the tray, documents, soda, pick up your plane axe, and open up all the surrounding luggage for loot. After that, just go and explore. Don't explore too much as you need to build a shelter before nighttime comes. You don't want to be awake when that happens. On day 2, this is a good time to explore a little bit further and decide if you want to build your base where you are right now or look for a better spot. You need to have a steady supply of water and food, both of which can be provided by a pond. If you're near one, you can start building up a base there. Experts would say not to do that as enemies usually patrol every pond in the world, but unless I give you specific information on what the world map looks like or where the enemy spawns would be, the patrol routes or which locations are the best to build a base on, I can't really tell you where you should build your base best. So just build where you feel like it and do your best to defend it as much as you can. You should have the following by day 3, 2 drying racks for meat, a log cabin or a hunter's hut, a campfire and a steady supply of water, whether it be through a pond or a rainwater collector. Finish this off by building stone walls around it and you're all set. Also, I forgot to mention, you can do all this by pressing the B key on PC and clicking on a blueprint. Place it where you want it to go and insert your materials on it. You need all these by day 3 but it should be easy to do. If not, there's no shame in reloading again. If you think you can handle it, then be my guest. The hardest part in the forest is picking the right spot to build your base in and gathering the necessary materials to build it. Everything else is rather easy to do if not manageable. I myself died multiple times but never because of the lack of food or water. It's usually because of my own inadequacies to biting off more than I could chew. So just relax, gather logs, sticks, rocks, and build yourself a starting base. If you see an enemy while doing said base building, think of them as an actual person and not an instant enemy. Being super aggressive this early in the game might not work as well as you would think, and I suggest only killing enemies if they start attacking you, you're sure you can finish the job, or if it's alone. It might be multiple people, if it is, there's really nothing you could do, you might be forced to fight back. The thing is, if you attack it and it manages to get away, then it'll return with reinforcements. The AI in this game can be a bit confusing. It actually works well with the game, I love it, just treat the cannibals as you would in real life. Do not be aggressive, unless you have to. 
As this is a survival game, obviously there's gonna be resource gathering and resource management. Most of the time, what you'll need to build your base are logs, sticks, and rocks. That's it. Yes, you'll need rope, cloth, skulls, and other things besides that, but usually, it's just those three, all of which can be gathered with just a regular plain axe. You'll also need leaves, but you can just acquire those passively by gathering logs and sticks, so don't worry about it. For food, if you build a hunter's shelter, birds would usually drop by that shelter to rest their legs. You can kill them for food and feathers, or you can rely on fishes on ponds, or deer, or rabbits, or squirrels, or turtles, it kinda depends on your location. Location. Every meat is edible as long as you cook it first. And yes, that includes cannibal meat. As long as it's not spoiled, you'll be fine. I'll say this here and now, if you play Don't Starve, you don't have to worry as much as that game. Unlike that game, hunger is super easy to fill up that really, it should be the least of your problems. I mean, it is a problem nonetheless, just don't overgather food, cause chances are, it will spoil. For a temporary food source while you're trying to find a good supply, you can eat candy bars found in your inventory, provided you took some from where you landed, like I said before, or soda for hydration, also where you landed. Everything that you've looted or taken will always be in your inventory by pressing I, other than lumber. That one you can only take two at a time. Other than that, one of the most necessary things you need to gather are animal skins. You'll need it for most things such as crafting a warm suit or more item bags. So don't forget to loot them when you can. You really need this. Next is... Crafting. Press I and you'll see everything in your inventory. Right click on an atom, for example sticks, and it'll place itself at the center of your screen. You have selected sticks as one of the ingredients to which you can build something on. To see everything that you can add to sticks, you can hover your cursor at the transparent gear icon and you'll see a list of things you can craft with it. In this case, if I wanted to make a crafted axe, I could add one rock and one rope. Click on the now opaque gear icon and there she is a crafted axe. Click on I again and it'll show up in your inventory with your other things. It's really good game design and this way you don't have to check the internet or keep on checking the internet on what you can craft with what you have. Just hover your cursor to the transparent gear and there they are. I usually build an upgraded spear in the first few days, if I can. This will help in stun locking enemies and catching fish. In fact, these are the things that I recommend you craft in the first 10 days. An upgraded spear, a repair tool, a bow, some arrows, bone armor, water skin, a pouch, stick bag, rock bag, small rock bag, quiver, spear bag, and a warm suit. These ones are a little hard to come by as their materials are harder to find but they are well worth it once you do have them. Also, the game doesn't actually tell you this but you can keybind specific tools and equipment by right clicking on an item and your bag. Click on the gear icon and you can select which of the four hotkeys you want your item to bind on. Just a quick tip. After the crafting side, let's go over the base building part of the game. I already tackled some of this in the beginning of the video, what you should have ready as soon as possible. So instead, what I'm going to tell you is how to build your base properly. There's many ways in building your base and there's a lot of fun in building your base differently every time. One person's base won't always be the same as another person's. And with that, there's really no one definitive way of building your base. It all depends on what type of person you are. All I'm gonna show you is what I learned in my two playthroughs of the game, once with friends and once by myself. First is build stone walls. It's the easiest to build and far more efficient. You'll need maximum defense in your base as enemies frequently attack your location depending on how active you are or how much you've been hostile towards them. I'm running out of breath. <laughs> what the fuck? Two, use the environment at its full capacity. If you need to build at the center of the lake, then go for it. Cannibals can't swim and will die immediately when underwater. They also tend to avoid cliff edges, so building right next to one counts as an extra defense and will also mean that you won't need to build walls there. Three, just go and accept that you can't find every single thing in one perfect spot. The perfect base location does not exist. Some spots will only have boars, some just turtles, some don't have a pond nearby, and some areas with very 
very little cannibal patrols don't have much resources to supply your base with. The sooner you accept this, the less you're gonna have to think about restarting over and over and over and over again. Also, if there is a spot where you can find almost everything, then there's not gonna be much of a point in building everywhere else. And lastly, don't make your base needlessly bigger than it should be. I like building medium-sized bases where everything that you need is literally 20 steps away. The bigger your base is, the more materials you'll need and the further you have to go to gather them. Also, the larger your base is, the more enemies you'll attract. So, 9 out of 10, it's not gonna be a good idea. Unless you're very, very, you know, defensive, then you'll be fine. But you're a beginner, you probably shouldn't do that. are five character needs that you have to continually look over while you're playing the game. Hunger, thirst, halt, and warmth. Wait, that's four. Hunger and thirst are easy to fix and I've already explained how these work, so what's left is halt and warmth. Let's start with halt. Halt is the physical wellness of your character. This includes your HP, but mostly whether your character is ill or not. Yes, your character can get sick. It won't be obvious, but they can and they will. It lowers your fullness, thirst, health, and energy gain from food by 10%. It's not that much, but it can get enough on harder difficulties. It is received by eating spoiled food or by being hit by a poison arrow. It can only be cured by eating aloe vera or by sleeping it off. Another type of character illness is infection. The player has a 25% chance to acquire it when being physically attacked while bloodied or by hitting a dead body. This also includes skinning animals and fighting cannibals in hand-to-hand -hand combat. In order to cure infection, the player must use aloe vera as the infection will not go away on its own. You can also prevent this by rinsing off blood as soon as possible by going for a quick swim. Having the infection status effect lowers your physical base strength. Strength affects the damage you do with melee weapons. The higher your strength, the more damage you can do. So you really don't want that to go down. The next thing you have to consider is warmth. It can get cold in the game, whether going through snow biome swimming at night, or just rain. Now, I can tell you that it affects your stamina gain, your health, and all that, yeah, 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 yeah. All you need to know is that being cold is bad, and you can even die from it if you're not careful. A good way to battle it is obviously being right next to a fire or being inside a log cabin or other large buildings. If you're outside exploring, a stick with a cloth on it will be enough to keep you warm for a while. Light it up and equip it and you'll be fine. Overall, you'll be fine as long as you keep your hunger and thirst up and don't get cold for too long. Check your stats ever so often in your survival guide and you'll be fine. The character needs part of the game is so easy to manage and really, you'll get used to it once you get used to it. What? The difficult part of the forest is actually... Exploration is pretty fun during the day and not so much during the night. What I do suggest is that you make sure that you have enough sticks and leaves while exploring because you don't exactly know when you'll need to create an emergency temporary shelter and save. That's a hard thing to say. <laughs> you explore the world for three reasons. First is to do just that. Explore, look around, check where there's enemies, check where there's supplies, where there's water, food, animal skins, groceries, groceries, sceneries, story items, gear. I also highly, highly suggest that you check and memorize specific landmarks while exploring. You won't get a map early on in this game, unless you get lucky and find a map and compass immediately. Once you leave your base, the only thing you can rely on to figure out where you are at that moment are the scattered landmarks, the lakes, the ponds, boats, mountains, islands, terrain. It's one of the biggest challenges in the game, but if you do camping and hiking in real life, then you'll be fine, as that is what you usually do anyways. If not, well shit, you have to adjust and bring out your inner survivor. The second reason for exploring is for scouting out a new base location. Maybe the base you have right now is not to your liking. It's not a great spot, there's no water, no food, it's too busy with cannibal attacks. Whatever the reason is, exploring with the intent of scouting is not a bad idea. And it's time well spent, as long as you don't overdo it. The third and final reason is for cave exploration. And if you want to advance the story, this is what you're gonna have to do. 
the caves in this game is super dark. So dark that you won't be able to see right in front of you. Get your ladder ready up and try to memorize each corner or passage you go through. You will get lost if you just randomly enter the series of caves within the caves you already went through. Heck, I tried to memorize where I went through and I still got confused. The caves are also home to many enemies. You'll encounter duos, trios, quadrios, sometimes all at once, both technically and literally. My suggestion is to build markers ever so often. That way you'll know which cave is which, and that way you won't have to figure out if you have already been there or not. Other than that, the only other problem is encountering enemies. Some enemies will only stay in a certain point though, so you can bait them out of their group and kill them one by one if you need to. If you want to do it the cheap way, that's fine and recommended. Climb a stiff ledge and use a bow and arrow. They won't reach you and they get to die eventually. Also, if you're worried about them respawning after you leave, don't. I'll tell you right now, cave enemies do not respawn. So kill what you can, go home, gear up, and try again. Explore it slowly and eventually you'll reach areas that will unlock more of the story, which is always nice. And it's the point of the game. And we have combat, the most dangerous and to be honest, one of the more underdeveloped mechanic in the game. Don't get me wrong, it's fine once you get used to it. It's actually well done. I don't know why I said it's underdeveloped. It's just really difficult to understand as a new player. Or maybe I'm just dumb. The AI in this game can be very, very unpredictable. Sometimes they'll just look at you at the distance, get close, then run away. Scream, but nothing else. They will attack, don't get me wrong. Sometimes it'll see you, run away, and bring other people. Sometimes the exact opposite. It's very confusing, just don't fight unless you absolutely need to. And do not try to fight 3 enemies at a time. Don't even try 2 at a time. Just 1 at a time is fine, and is much more, well, recommended. I personally use and suggest using bow and arrows, get a headshot, and it will die 1 shot, 1 kill. If not, do another. Maybe it just didn't hit right, or it has more health than it should. For reasons. Use your brain. Going all in would be a bad idea. You are but a survivor, so fight like one. Use traps, bait them in, run away, use bows, throw spears, sidestep. It's a very useful skill as most enemies do a launching attack when you're far away. Stun lock enemies by hitting them multiple times, but do so while checking your stamina if you're running out. There is a basic stamina system in the game. Every time you run, attack, jump, and climb, you will use stamina. So always keep an eye on it if you're running out. If you want, you can use fire arrows, flares, and flame traps on some of them. They will catch on fire and panic, this will give you a chance to kill the others. It's survivor combat. It's a different way of combat, but it's fun nonetheless. And that's it. That's my beginner's guide video on the forest. It teaches you what you need to know as a beginner without trying to give unnecessary or overcomplicated information that is better left, learned, and to be honest, experience as you play. The Forest is an amazing game, both friendly to new players in the genre, but at the same time difficult enough for survival game fans. Its mysterious but mind-boggling story is enough to keep you exploring, and its true dark nights and unpredictable enemy AI just adds to that overall fear and tension. Not found in many other horror games. One thing I have to say though is that just accept that if you're like me and you want a perfect start, you will have to do multiple playthroughs of the first 5 days. It's the most complicated part of the game and it will affect the rest of your playthrough. But once you find that one spot to which you can build your dream base, then you're all good and ready to see what else the game has to offer. And that's it! If you want to learn more about the forest and get more tips and tricks, I suggest watching my next video on the series, How to Play the Forest, Tips and Tricks. Like the video if you don't dislike it and dislike if you don't like it. Share it with your friends and if you do like it, consider subscribing to the phantom heart for more and click on that notification bell to see of my more my more to see more of my videos i'm sis and i legit want to take a rest now i'm really tired i'm i'm sick i forgot to mention i'm sick why do i keep on making videos when i'm sick i'm sis and yeah bye it's a really nice day,